Welcome to your first practical lesson in CH301. In this first practical lesson, we shall learn how to do a simple titration. Before I proceed any further, let's just refer to the handout that's been given to you. Let's look at the page containing the chemicals and apparatus that I use. First, we have FA1 which is your sodium hydroxide solution. I have FA2, which is your hydrochloric solution. I've got a bottle of deionized water. I have methyl orange indicator. And over here, we have a pipette. Now, I'd like you to take a look at this pipette clearly. First of all, note that it's a 25 cm cube pipette, which is actually written on the pipette itself. Next, we have a pipette filler. We have two conical flasks. We have a 50 cm cube burette. Now, what's very interesting about your burette is the way the numbers are given. If you look closely at your burette, you will see it starts from 0 at the top and 50 at the bottom. This is quite unusual for the apparatus that I use to measure volume. For example, your measuring cylinder, which starts at 0 at the bottom and goes to 50 at the top. This is because this burette is specially designed for your titration experiment. Next, we have a filter funnel, a retort stand with a clamp, we have white towel, which I shall put on the retort stand. We have a 50 cm cube beaker and white containers. So let's first see what we should do. Before I go into what we are supposed to do, let's first look at what is the purpose of doing a titration. A titration is carried out when we need to know the concentration of an unknown solution solution A. Okay, in, in this case, solution A is your Fa2, which is unknown. And how are we going to do this? We're going to do this by titrating solution A with another solution. B, which you know the concentration. In this case, it is Fa1. Okay, which has a concentration of 0 0.1 moles per dm cube. So how do we go about? Well, we know that the acid will react with the base. It will give us a salt. In this case, we see that the reaction has a stoichiometric ratio of 1 is to 1. So therefore, we know that when they completely react, we expect them to have exactly the same number of moles. Therefore, at the end point, amount of Fa1 equal amount of Fa2. 
Okay, because of this, it is very important we know the exact amount of Fa1 and Fa2 that's actually used in this reaction. And all our actions in what we do, how do we rinse? It's all referring back to this very fact that we have the complete control of the amount of Fa1 and Fa2. Now let us first look at what we are going to do. First of all, we rinse all your apparatus with water. I've already rinsed mine and therefore I shall not rinse it again. Next, what else do I rinse it with? Well, we have three different apparatus that will be used in this case. I have a pipette, I have a burette, and I have the conical flask. All three of these will be used to contain Fa1 or Fa2. In this case, when I'm going to fill up my burette, I would like to rinse it with what's in the burette. Why? Because the burette measures the exact volume I'm going to be used. But then again, we are not concerned about the volume. We are concerned about the amount. Since we know the amount is a volume times concentration, it's therefore important the solution that's contained in the burette has an exact concentration. Therefore, in this case, for the burette, I will rinse it with the solution that's supposed to be the burette, which is the FA1. So I shall set it up. This is how we set up the burette. As you can see, there's a groove and therefore the burette sits nicely in the groove. Next, we use a pipette filler whereby we are going to put in the FA1. But how do I do it? Do I do it this way? No, because this is a safety concern. If some of it were to spill on my head, that would be not very good. Therefore, I'll put it slightly lower down so that now it's below my head and preferably below my eye because we do not wish to have it in our eyes. By the way, please make sure that the burette is in the closed position. As we can see, the closed position is when the line for the tap is perpendicular to the line of the burette. So I fill it a bit. That is to rinse the side of the burette. I use a waste container and I drain out the excess, all of it. So this is used the first time just to rinse the burette. So that when I add in new solution into the burette, the concentration is not diluted by the water that's sticking to the burette at the start. When this is done, I then fill up the burette again. So where do I fill up the burette? It is always a good practice to fill up the burette between the 0 and 10th mark. After I finish filling, it is a good practice to put the filter funnel back into FA1. Why do we do this so? Because number one, when I put it back here, if I ever need to fill it again, I will be holding the correct bottle of FA1 and I will not mistake it by filling up with FA2. After it's filled, I put it up here. Now if you notice carefully, there is actually a bubble that is in your burette. It is very important that we completely get rid of this bubble. So how do we do this? We need to open this tab fully at the start. So just open it fully and then close it. Now there is no more bubble in the burette. Any bubbles in the burette will interfere with our readings because this bubble will be still counted as a volume but now it does not contain the solution that's in here and therefore it will give us an inaccurate reading. When this is done, 
I place the white tile below the burette. And let's now go to the pipette. To use the pipette, we have a pipette filler. Okay, the pipette filler has three valves. Valves A, valves S, and valves E. A is pressed when you want to get rid of the air that's in the pipette filler. So first of all, we press valves A and we get rid of the air. Next, we put in the pipette below the pipette filler. So how much do we put in? So how, first of all, firstly, we would like to put it in carefully. Notice the position of my fingers. They are held at the top of the pipette. Do not hold it at the bottom because when you shove this through, it will snap and go into your hand. So always hold it at the top. Then we push it in a bit until it is tight. Making sure that the top of the pipette, in this case, does not pass the valve E. If it does, then the pipette filler will not work properly. We now need to rinse this pipette by first, when we press S, notice that the solution is going in. We suck up a bit of solution, then we rinse the pipette. After we have rinsed it, we then dispose of the balance. I can press E. Notice as I press E, the solution will drop. I can also remove the pipette filler from the pipette in this case. After it's done, I attach the pipette filler again. Now I will use it to fill up the conical flask. Notice these conical flasks are not rinsed with any solution. They are only rinsed with water. Why? It's because now this conical flask only need to contain the amount that's added from the pipette. If you rinse it with any other solution, you are adding additional chemicals. So I shall now suck up the FA2 On your pipette, you will see two different markings There's one that is marked 25 at the top and that's a very thin line The correct way to measure is up to the thin line Firstly, I suck up the FA2 so it's above that line Okay as you can see, it's above the line. Uh, so, next thing I need to do, I lift it above the solution and I press E slowly to drop it to the line. Of course, another way is to suck it all above the line and to use your finger. Okay, by rotating my, lifting it above, I now rotate my finger to the point in which the solution drops exactly to the line. When this is done, I touch the side of the pipette to the wall. Now this contains 25 cm cube and we shall put it into the flask number one. When it's finished going down, we shall wait for 5 seconds. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. This is to allow enough time for the solution at the wall of this pipette to drop down to the bottom. We then touch the tip of the pipette to the side of the wall. You may tap it at the bottom if you want as well. And you should notice there's just one small tiny drop remaining. This drop is not supposed to be 
blown out into the conical flask. The amount delivered is 25 cm cube. The amount contained is not exactly 25 cm cube. It takes into account that little drop that you see there. We should then do this a second time. It's always a good practice to prepare two conical flasks at the start. Why? Because it saves a lot of time. Because the minimum number of conical flasks or readings that you need to take is two. In this case, I shall use the pipette filler. I lift it up above and I drop it to the line. Attach the side and then I put it into the conical flask. And I press E while loosening the pipette filler. Notice it has finished, so I shall count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. Again, I touch the pipette to the bottom or to the side, and I take it out. And notice it has exactly the same amount remaining, which is just one drop. Having done this, I need to remember to add the pH indicator. In this case, we shall use a metal orange indicator which has a end point at approximately orange. So I shall add three drops, one drop, two drops, three drops, one drop, two drops, three drops. Notice they have turned Red in this case. And why is it red? Because in a acidic pH or pH less than the 7, it is a reddish in color. And uh, it changes to a yellowish color in the presence of a in a very basic condition. And the end point in this case is going to be orange. So once this is done, we are now prepared to do our titration. We check to make sure there is no filter funnel at the top. There is no bubble below. We now start to read the reading. When you read the reading of the burette, be careful because the top number is smaller than the bottom number. In my case now, I see a number of... I see the, menis the bottom of the meniscus somewhere between 4 and 5. So I expect this to be 4 point something. As I look closer, I see this is 4.6. I shall record it as 4.60. All burette readings have to be given in two decimal place and they are recorded in either 0, 0.00 or 0, 0.5. Why? Because one marking here is 0 0.10 but we can measure up to half a marking which is 0 0.05 So now I shall record down my readings which is 4.60 So initial four point six zero. Now let me do this titration let me clear so that it's easier for you to see. Notice it is red first at the start. I shall raise this slightly above my conical flask. I arrange my burette such that 
it is comfortable for me, a right hander. My left hand is now controlling the burette. Notice my fingers. They, they can move up and down to allow me to control the, the tap at the bottom of the burette. My right arm, which is my dominant arm, I'm using it to swirl the solution. As I add the, as the FA1 in this case, I shall swirl the FA2 below. So I add a bit and I stir, add a bit and I swirl it. Notice it is still red, means it's not yet near the end point. Now notice the colour is fading a bit, telling me that I'm approaching the end point. So I shall be more careful in my in adding the solution, I'll add less and less. Now notice at this point of time we can see a tinge of orange coming out at which I need to reduce each addition to just one drop. The closer we get, we'll see it's becoming more and more orange-like, but there's still a bit of a tinge of pink. And therefore, at this point of time, I know that it's only going to take just a few drops. So I add one drop. And I shake. I add one more drop. And I shake. At this point of time, the color is changing rapidly. And this is the expected endpoint where we can see an orange color or what you normally may see is also a salmon salmon light color so this is the end point but notice it doesn't really matter uh, you are given some leeway so what happens if you exceed this end point well even if you exceed by one drop the color should change by a lot. Notice I'm just going to add one drop here. Oh sorry, before we add that one drop, let us take a reading. In this case, I now have a reading of 33.40. So I add one drop. And I stir. Notice that when it's in excess of one drop, the solution now turns to yellow. It is no longer that orange color that we see. Try not to exceed past the end point because, as you notice, even if I add the, a lot more, 
the color will still remain yellow. Therefore, you will not know how much more you have exceeded once you have exceeded the point because it just remains as yellow. So after we get our first reading, we'll do the same with the second reading. But before we can do the second one, we need to top up the burette. Notice, since my filter funnel is in, the correct solution, I do not need to start reading again to see oh, what solution do I need to get. Because it's the solution with the filter funnel. I top it up once again, somewhere between 0 to 10. Bring it up to the top. I wait for a while for the readings to stabilize. And in this case, I see it to be 7.15. And I'll start my titration. Now, notice the first time that I did. Let's see how much does it give us. This is 80. And 28.80. So now I know I need 28.80. So if I were to start at 27, then I need to add 28. I expect it to be somewhere between um, maybe 35.95. So I know what is going to be my exact reading. I do not need to start slowly at the start anymore. I know I can safely add in up to the point of 35 without having any end point reaching yet. So in this case, I shall just add the solution down.